Hello boys, welcome back to the channel. I'm doing another Seven Nights video, or Seven Nights 2 video, and this one is not for, uh, this one is not for, uh, an account review. This is my account, you know. Uh, anyway, what are we doing today? Well, I'm gonna tell you guys how to, you know, kind of, come on, go in there. I'm gonna tell you guys how to deal with T15 Salios. Now, this doesn't just apply to T15. It applies to all, all the tiers below. But, uh, you know, this is the team that I used to beat T15 Salios, so it is also the team that you can use to defeat T15 Salios. Okay, so, first things first, I realize that somebody has a missing piece, but uh, we can fix that. We can fix that. Anyway, I realize you might not have all the heroes or the pet present, so... I will explain the role that each hero and their associated gear set serves, so that way you can kind of mix and match based on what you have. So, starting from the top of the roster, we'll circle back to the pet and to the mastery, okay? So starting at the top of the roster, we have Red Rudy. Now, his primary purpose here is to provide the big fat fucking shield that's associated with his alt. Because after T10, when Salios reappears after doing the attack with the swords, uh, where you have to, you know, attack one of the swords, uh, he will do this scream attack. It does a lot of damage. It hurts a lot. Rudy's shield basically stops most people from dying. To facilitate this, Rudy is wielding a, uh, a full defense set, followed by his normal, uh, you know, I prefer 2 DR, 1 block. You know, just that's just that's just a personal preference. It's just a personal preference. You can kind of mess with these because Rudy's not exactly tanking. Uh, next up is Serena. So Serena is an odd one because she has you know she has all kinds of AOE abilities. You know she's a damage dealer, but if you just consider those things, uh, however, her passive causes her to heal whenever she does her ultimate, and she also had and her ultimate. Her passive causes her to heal whenever she does her skills, not her ultimate. And her ultimate re basically just eliminates all but the longest cooldowns. This is phenomenal. This is great for basically keeping uptime on the various debuffs from some of these other characters here, and buffs from the characters that have buffs, like Rudy, like, uh, you know, like Chris, uh, and even, even Shay to a certain extent. Uh, I'm equipping her with a full attack set because the higher her attack is, the more she is capable of healing, and also the more damage she does. Uh, you know, this is uh, this is pretty obvious. Uh, some people like cooldown on Serena. However, uh, for because of Shay, Serena can kind of keep her ult, you know, can ult pretty consistently, which reduces her own cooldowns as well. For accessories. For accessories, I've got one red healing accessory and two damage dealt uh, accessories in blue. Uh, this is basically just to, you know, the, the healing accessory is just to buff up her healing. And damage done is pretty straightforward. I wanted to do more damage. Next is Ming. Ming is the suppressor. If you have Mercure, use, you know, you can use, and he's stronger than your Ming, use Mercure. However, to this day, my Ming is still stronger than my Mercure. That being said, it is imperative that she survives. Because in T15, there is no place to hide when Salios does his suppressor attack. There is no place to hide. So it is imperative that your suppressor stays alive. Uh, I mean, you might get some clutch revives in there just to kind of work it, but, uh, you know, it's it's rough, okay? It, it, it can be, it's rough, all right? You're gonna fucking die. So, to facilitate this, since I don't have a second defense set ready to go, I just gave her the mostly radiant health set, which, do I have a radiant, uh, Lysadria blade? I don't. Anyway, so I just gave her the mostly radiant health set. Uh, I would go full, I would go three full DR accessories. I put this here, this, uh, Nestra, uh, earring, because it gives her a bunch of health, and it gives her a 50% chance to do a shield. Uh, which, you know, might come in kind of clutch. Next up is my boy Delens. Delens is 
Uh, Delans here is your fucking fat cock DPS. He also has a passive that increases the damage dealt by all of your party members. I consider this to be a bonus. His primary purpose is to deal damage, and therefore my objective has become to, has is to facilitate that damage in whatever way possible. So as a result, I have given him the good attack set. You know, the big boy shit. T5. The enchantments weren't here before, but they are now. You know, to facilitate, de you know, Delon's dealing fat cock damage. Uh, if you don't have any radiance, uh, the uh, uh, increase attack upon landing critical hit is perfect. You know, that's perfect shit. Uh, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna change any gear around just to show that this can be done with this setup. You know, I also threw this, uh, this, uh, this transcending vow ring on here just so he ults more often because uh, his ult does fat dick damage. Next is Rachel. Rachel's primary purpose here is to be a debuffer. So to, you know, with, and do, you know, ha and with her dots, uh, those being the burns. To facilitate her burn damage, I have given her a full skill upset, five piece. Oh yeah. So basically just a maximum burn damage. Uh, I kind of didn't really know what to do with her accessories. Like I, I gave her the crit earrings, but I don't think she has enough crit to actually do it, so you might want to go just full damage dealt. Um, or you could give her, if you have a transcending vow piece, since Salios will pretty much have around three burns on him at all times, her ult will do a bunch of damage. I think it caps out at five, if I remember correctly. But that's Rachel's purpose, is the debuffer. And dot damage. Chris. So, Chris is here to be crit support. His passive provides crit chance to everybody in the party. It doesn't really work on Delans considering his passive, but it works for everybody else, and that's the va that's the value we want. Uh, to help him crit more, I just gave him a crit set, uh, especially since at the time, uh, you know, I don't, you know, I, I'm trying to build two sets of each, and my att my other attack set is on Serena, so I went with crit since it's ready to go. Uh, since he has, since he's giving like 30% crit chance to everybody at level 40, something around there, uh, he has a decent crit chance with this set, so I gave him, uh, you know, crit pieces and a damage dealt because, you know, I, I wanted to see more red. Technically speaking, it is more mathematically viable, you know, in terms of just the crit set to give two red pieces, you know, and a blue. It gives you more damage. It gives you more of the effect. To prove this, observe. So that's not the right one. So a two, a three-piece set on this gives thirty percent crit for the red set. At it, however, at a two-piece, it's twenty-two and a half. Actually, I can move it down here. Actually, yeah, we have a side-by-side -side comparison. Now, thirty percent three-piece, or a two-piece at twenty-two and a half, and a one-piece at ten. That's thirty-two and a half if you have one blue in there. That's more than 30 and it li it's the same duration it's the same stat it has the same activation condition the only thing that's the only thing that you're losing out on is you know base stats from the item itself which is a choice that you make uh, personally i went a bit you know since the middle one here is you know the, the since the amulet gives defense i just i get you know i wanted chris to be a little bit more survivable so i give him a little bit more defense by giving him a red accessory you know <clears throat> Next is Karen. Now, Karen serves an important role. Not only is she the, you know, the big dick healer in the game, but she is currently the only character with a revive. That, be that means that if you fuck up, you have to make sure that Karen stays alive. Now, the way that I did this was with a, th was with a three piece defense and a two piece cooldown. You know, cooldown to help her heal more and you know, just full-on fucking DR, which illustrates the principle that I was expressing earlier. You know, two red, one blue. Let me go over it real quick again. So, two red is 11, you know, is 11, 1125, you know, plus five is 1625, which is better than 15. So, no red ring for her. Karen doesn't need attack, so that's the blue piece. That's the one I picked. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> Sorry. Sorry. <clears throat> Shit. Okay. Finally, we have Shay. Shay's purpose is simple. Uh, her ult gives everybody else their ult. And, uh, you know, for a lot of the people here, that's that's either fucking fat dick damage or 
you know, some utility thing, a shield, a Ming does damage, you know, fucking care, you know, if you get Karen's ult up really fast, you can kind of be a little bit more lax with making the mistakes, and, you know, you can just revive, you know, just as long as Karen's alive, of course, um, for her. Uh, three-piece skill up, two-piece, uh, quick attack, which I don't, do I not have? Oh, right, I transmuted it. Anyway, so three-piece, you know, three-piece skill up, two-piece quick attack. Now, quick attack, uh, I found myself that I prefer five-piece, uh, attack speed, just so I can free up the skill piece, the skill pieces for somebody else. Uh, that's, that's just my personal preference. I don't actually, you know, I don't, I haven't actually tested to see if it's, you know, just better, just in general. But that's that's kind of my feeling about it. Uh, accessories, uh, two two healing. I didn't have a uh, at the time. I didn't at the time of this. I didn't have a red gigantus ring, uh, a red healing ring. But if you do, slap it on there. Uh, I put transcending vow because it works with Shay's passive. It gives more alt gauge. The faster her alt charges, the faster everybody else can use their alts. All right, with me so far, and that was character descriptions. Now we move on to pets. So considering you want to be a little bit more defensive, uh, Valder Pets is basically going to be what works for the Scream. You just pop the Valder Pet right as Salios does the Scream. If you're a little bit nervous, thinking, oh, maybe he'll kill me, you know, you just pop the Valder Pet. Immune to damage for two seconds, bada bing, bada boom. That's really what you got there. Uh, Alternatives would be Gelu for his passive defense, uh, Windigo for damage for decreasing damage received. Um, I guess Rudy would work for block rates. Uh, I guess Juju kind of works for health. Uh, you know, uh, I mean Sherry doesn't really work here. Yon He doesn't work here. Uh, but Shay Shay has where? Oh, I can't I can't actually see it while while she's there. Shay's thing is increasing defense. Ignore defense efficiency, which is what Delans does with his ult, uh, and defense in four player and eight player raids by 8%. Uh, you know, it's 2% better than Gelu and has an additional effect. And if you need to pop the pet, it's a bigger heal. All right, we're gonna be running this, we're gonna be running this with Shay. Mastery. Mastery is different. So I have the single mastery on my, uh, on my team for Celios. Now, for single mastery, really what you want is, you know, this. Just go all attack. Go all attack, boost everybody's, you know, it, it boost everybody's attack. If your team is different, you know, maybe it incorporates a few more ranged, you know, actual ranged characters, switch to ranged. If it has a lot more melee than mine, switch to melee. Just go all, all in on attack, with the exception of the status effect resistance that you just want to keep. You know, just all attack. I mean, this one's field explosive doesn't count. More status resistance, boss slayer, you know, and that's really all you need. You know, back then we only had up to level 100. I've been kind of splurging a little bit, um, but there you go. That's that's the ministry. Now I'm gonna run through this. I'm gonna run through this one time so that I can explain the attacks. Now I realize I do have the completion buff, so I, it is going to be a bit easier for me to actually clear this. But Salios is definitely one of the of the he's the he's 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 one of the he's he's you can dodge his stuff. You don't necessarily have to be at the combat power that is suggested. You can be vastly below like I am right now. So the battle has started. You want to have your rally on because you will be dodging attacks with everybody because he's got these fat fucking AoEs everywhere. Now for this one, you range people, you want to move them in, and then you want to move out. And then you want to just let it go back in. Alright. Now people are going to start using their ults. This is good, because it's going to start shredding up. He's got a lot of health. Now for this attack, you want to go up here. Just like this. You know, that forward slash, not even, a, not even a concern. You have proper defense, it's not even a concern. So this attack, you're going to want to go, you're going to want to go, like, in between right there i might have cut that a bit i cut that a bit close but sword graveyard you want to start dodging as soon as that you know circle around him shows up get in real close then spread out that's how you dodge everything you want to have as much dps time as you possibly can just to sit here and just wail on his ass now at this point he's going to do suppressor the shout will do damage the shout does do damage it see it doesn't seem to be fixed particularly uh however it does uh you know it does, uh, it can crit. 
Now I did the full suppression there. I couldn't do that when I first did it, but this is a tool that you have now. I would recommend you do this because it lets you do more damage to the boss on suppressor, which means that you can, you know, stay ahead of that rage meter up at the top. Now, Salios being an eight man with with a cutscene to announce his second phase, he has two rage meters. So really, as long as you can get to 50% before it goes down, that's a good thing. That's what that's that's a sign that you're making great progress. As you can see, it's about halfway down, and I'm way below 75%. That's how that works in this case. All right, we're just shredding his ass up. I'm, I've been taking glances over at, you know, fucking Streamlabs the whole time, you know, pretending to look at the camera because that's where it is, and I've been doing all right. You know, you can kind of watch the, you know, you can kind of, you know, like I said, he, he punishes you though. Like you get something wrong. Like if I had fucking stayed in there, my party would have died and I would have been done. I would have had to restart the run, and that takes a long time at this level. He's doing segmentation again. And I missed, I missed the suppressor, but he was close enough that it really doesn't matter. Now we're in phase two. This is where things change. And this is the part where it really hurts when you fuck up and have to start over. However, we are going through it. Now, his attacks do change. He starts getting these cross sections in here to fuck you, you know, to fuck with your dodging. Because right now you probably have some patterns that you've memorized. You know, he's doing it again with more, you know, see those two cross sections in there on his, on his attacks? That's gonna fuck you up. Sword Graveyards, or Wave of Darkness and Sword Graveyard are the same. You dodge them the same way. However, those attacks where he's just got stuff going across the field, they get cross sections, they get additional things where, you know, he's, he's trying to catch, he's trying to catch you so he can hurt you. Fucking Delon's, <sighs> Delon's is a backline assassin, so he always gets, you know, it's pretty difficult not for him not to get hit by that. My Delens is a bit more survivable, and he had Rudy's shield active. Now, is this going to be swords? Ah, uh, this is what I refer to as the fucking bullshit attack, because you have all this fucking AOE shit spawning everywhere. Now, what you, you know, what you can do is you can kind of wait for it to be about half over, and then you can head to the outside here. You know, head to the outer edge here, and kind of wait for it to be over. You know, you you can kind of learn the timing just by experiencing it, but about halfway, you can get through it. Now. This time he should do swords, in which case I recommend turning your ults to manual. The reason why is because I don't know what Shay's charge is. And because I don't know, you know, I want her to ult manually so that Rudy's ult will be ready. Alright, once these swords go away and Salius reappears, you immediately pop Rudy's ult. Watch, like this. Like that. Alright, he's gonna do the scream. He's gonna do the scream. That did a bunch of damage that stripped the shield off of everyone that does so much damage. All right, he's going to do it again. I'm a bit unprepared for this. However, I don't think... Yeah, see? Karen coming in clutch. And there you go. Boom. Hit that little circle. Now, the tip for hitting the circle is to wait until the little bar hits it like the little tips that you saw, you know, around the circle, those decorative tips. You hit it right when it hits that. You know, you click it. It, sh you know, you should get it every time. I didn't get it the second time because I delayed my click by about, you know, a little, se uh, you know, almost a second. Here we go. Damage again. He, I got very lucky here, and he did he did his thing twice. I also, you know, delayed my click by just a little bit there. So, you know, we've shredded him up. He's down. There you go. That's T15 Salios. It's, it's pretty high intensity the first time you do it, but then every other time you do it afterwards. You know, you can kind of be, you can be a little bit more nonchalant about it like I am right now. So... That was T15. I got a fucking blue circle out of it. You know, I got some books. It's a lot of good stuff. All right. So, you know, that's you know that's it. Um, you know, if you enjoyed the if you enjoyed the video, you know, stick around. I might have some other stuff in store. If you if there's something relating to Seven Nights that you or seven nights too i should say that you want to see shoot me a fucking you know shoot me a fucking comment saying hey yo gz i want to see uh, i want to see you do this and uh you know i'll fucking i'll fucking work on it if you're in seven nights too and uh, you're looking for a guild uh join in acrasia we have space but until then i've been gz see you next time